All right. Hello, and thank you for joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. A fun anecdote uh, today is our 100th episode of Recipe Share. We've done this 100 times. We're excited to continue sharing recipes with you. Today's category is it's all gravy, gravy recipes. I'm Elizabeth, and as usual, I'm joined today by Beth and Katie to tell us about their recipes. Uh, so Katie, tell us about your gravy. Okay, so the recipe that I am sharing today is for pan fried pork chops with milk gravy. And this comes from the magazine Cook's Country, the August, September, 2017 issue. So it's a little bit of an old one. I found this while Googling. Um, so, this is what you do. First of all, you need pork chops that are that are boneless and no more than a half an inch thick. If your pork chops are thicker than that, you just use uh just thin them with a meat pounder. That's what I did. So because mine were a little bit thicker and that worked fine. Um, and then you are gonna make your uh coating that is flour, garlic powder salt, pepper, cayenne, you mix that all together in a shallow dish, and then you add some milk to that mixture. And you just kind of like squish it with your fingers and rub the flour and milk together until you get this kind of like shaggy pieces of dough that form. Um, and I wasn't real confident when I first read that, but it totally works. <laughs> and then uh, you take a couple eggs, you whisk those together in a second shallow dish. And then you take a wire rack, you put it on a, a rimmed baking sheet, pat your pork chops like super dry with a paper towel, season them with salt and pepper. And then you dredge the pork chops in that flour mixture that you just made and shake the excess off. Then you dredge them in the eggs, drip the excess off, and then you put them back in the flour and you just kind of like press all around to adhere it. Um, and that, and then you um, put those back on, or then you put them on your wire rack and just repeat until you're done with your pork chops. And you put them in the refrigerator and you refrigerate them for at least 15 minutes, but up to two hours. And that whole process just makes it so that um, coating just sticks to the pork chops better. And I found that it totally worked. Um, so that was a really nice thing to learn. Um, so then you're going to fry up your pork chops, you take a plate, line it with paper towel, heat your oil in a nonstick skillet. Um, and then, so you're heating your oil to 375 degrees and you add two pork chops at a time and cook them until your meat is 140 degrees. And it says like two to three minutes each side, but I found that it took me like several times of flipping them every two minutes, um, even with the 375 oil to get them up to the temperature of 140. And I thought that um, it was fine. It's just like you want to make sure that you're turning them still every two minutes, even if it's taking longer, just so that you're not burning them on the bottom. Um, so that that was totally fine. Just took a little bit longer than they said it was going to. Um, and then you just transfer those to the plate. I have a picture of them coming right out of the skillet. Um, if you're doing more chops, you just repeat with the same oil. Um, and then you reserve two tablespoons of your oil to make your gravy. And you whisk in, it's in the same skillet, you whisk in two tablespoons of flour, a teaspoon of pepper, half teaspoon of salt, cook all that until it's bubbly and it starts to smell good, just about 30 seconds. And then you whisk in a cup and a half of milk, bring that up to a boil, and then you just cook it until it's slightly thickened. That just takes about two minutes. Uh, and you serve your gravy with your pork chops. We made some 
uh, sauteed potatoes to go with this as well. And the gravy was super good with that. Um, I've made it twice now um, and I really enjoyed it. My husband loved it too. So this is definitely a keeper recipe for us. It's very comforting and um, super tasty. That sounds good. And you made it seem, even though there's some steps, you made it seem easy. And I don't cook with pork chops. And I feel like the times I've had, it's always been bone in. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm intrigued by this because it, that just seems easier for like, you know, to not to just, and I love that you can pound it down to the, you know, whatever size that it needs to be. And, um, yum. Yeah, it is really easy. And I was a little intimidated by the steps. The first time I made it, I kind of had my husband like looking over my shoulder because I don't really fry a lot either. So it was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. But then once I did it once, I was like, okay, this is this is pretty simple and impressive. And um, we don't eat a ton of pork chops either, um, but definitely always without the bone because they're much easier to cook. And uh, they're really cheap at Costco. So there's a pro tip as well. Um, I was intrigued by the, um, you know, you put your your crust, you know, whatever the breading on it and then put it in the fridge. Mm -hmm. And do you think that's why it took longer to make or did you take it out and let it sit for a bit? Could be fridge. that it was cold okay. from being in the fridge. And that's why, because there's no instruction that says like, take it out and let it rest after being in the fridge. And that could potentially help it cook faster. I could see that. But yeah. then like, I wonder if the the coating would start to come off because I know that's part of like keeping the egg cold. So I'm not sure. Yeah. It would be something to experiment with for sure. I'm not a huge pork chop fan. It's something, you know, Kurt hit. I didn't grow up with pork chops. Mm -hmm. um, so occasionally we'll have them, but it's, you know, I'm not, eh, you know. Let me I tell you, it. this is a good way to go with pork chops. Okay. Uh, good you to know, know, some I'll breading and gravy, it, that's going to make just about anything taste good. <laughs> For sure. All right, Beth, tell us about your gravy. All right, my gravy, I knew... Um, after going to Greenville, South Carolina, we went to this place called Biscuit Head. And that's a um, term for big, they call them cat head biscuits. So the biscuits that you get down south, because they're as big as a cat's head. Um, so this Biscuit Head place had long line and and they had multiple gravies. So I was really curious. I didn't have this veg vegan one, um, but I looked it up. I wanted to see if I could find it. And sure enough, I did find the actual biscuit head vegetarian Southern sweet potato gravy um, on a site called Biscuits and Booze. There's no booze in here. And um, they didn't serve it there either. Uh, it was a place that had a really long line. And, you know, it was like you had to get there early. Anyway, so the sweet potato gravy was very tasty. It called for uh, microwaving a sweet potato uh, just for a couple minutes to soften it up, a yellow onion sliced, um, a can of coconut milk, a half a teaspoon of what they refer to as moochie curry. I just had curry from, and evidently moochie curry is a little spicier. So I don't remember if I added any cayenne because it's been too long. I also called for a quarter teaspoon of fresh ground pepper, which is kind of a lot. So um, I just thought that was interesting. A pinch of cardamom, and then it calls for, you know, flour and olive oil. So you you cook that potato, you um, and then chunk it. You uh, saute your your onion, then you, you know, you make a gravy with the, the coconut milk and the pepper and the spices. And then... Um, I have a picture and that particular evening we poured, we put it over rice because I had rice in my fridge. It, it had chunks of, um, of the sweet potato. And, you know, I likened it like if you had sausage gravy, you'd have chunks of sausage, right? So, um, so it was, it was different. It was very tasty. And I was very proud of myself for making something vegan because I 
to, you know, I'm always adding cheese to stuff. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was really good. And uh, I would recommend it for whether on your grits or eggs, or just as a side dish, if you're looking for some gravy, it's all gravy. That's a cool take, Beth. Good for you. I like that. That's really interesting. And um, of course the coconut milk is, that makes perfect sense. I was so, I was going to be like, wait, what's going to be the yeah. like, liquid, but yeah, of course that's yeah, that it was really tasty. Yeah, it was, it was good. It looked good. And yeah. Yeah. I've never heard of such a thing. So thanks for sharing that. That's really cool. And I bet that is good on grits. Yes. That sounds like it would be amazing. Yeah. I would have made grits, but it just, since we had rice, it just, you know, and it worked, yeah. worked for that. So, but yeah, you could even put it on, on French fries, probably a poutine. Or tots. Mm, tots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beth, what, when you were at the place in North Carolina or South Carolina, South Carolina? South Carolina. Yeah. What gravy did you get there? Oh, I, I ended up having, I, I don't know. I don't even remember. I feel like Kurt got one. It was, they, they had like six or eight different mm -hmm. cookies. I don't even remember. I know that I wanted grits and cheese. And honestly, I just don't <laughs> remember. Another thing that was very cool about this place, it had a topping bar. So, and they were like with signs saying, don't waste the toppings. We spend a lot of time making these things. So it was like cookie batter butter or, you know, like spicy cherry jam. Or I mean, there was just like mm -hmm. ton. There was a whole bar of things. And and so I, I refrained from tasting a lot because I wanted to, you know, didn't want to waste, but but it was a very cool, cool place. And there's one in Asheville too. So anyway, um, well, Elizabeth, what was your recipe? this week okay well this is one of the ones that was a challenge for me because um I'm not a big gravy person it doesn't occur to me to make it um I once had like a bad experience with sausage gravy so like over biscuits and I got sick so I'm kind of like anyway my mom makes it over um with you know, for Thanksgiving, she'll use, do it for the mashed potatoes. It's always just like fine. I feel like I've always thought that it's like really bad for you. So I have like avoided making it. I know this isn't true. Anyway, this is just all background to say that like, I don't know anything about gravy and I never make it. So I was researching cause I was like, okay, I'm not going to like get a turkey and make turkey gravy. So what am I going to do? And I found a recipe for miracle mushroom gravy. Um, so I thought I would give that a whirl and, uh, let me pull it up here so I can accurately reference it. Okay. So you use cremini or, you know, Bella, baby Bella mushrooms and you slice them. Um, you add some oil to a frying pan and saute the mushrooms until browned. And then you add half a cup of diced shallots, um, and just cook those for a few minutes too. I loved it, like this recipe because it says like, no need to be overly precise. I'm like, all right, great. So then, um, you put the mushrooms and the shallots into your food processor or blender, and you add some dried sage, a little bit of red pepper flakes. You're supposed to like grate a clove, um, or not a whole clove, but a, like a little bit of a clove, but it literally called for one eighth of a teaspoon. And I was just like, you know what? No, I'm not doing that because eh. so I didn't, I left that out. Um, and then you add a tablespoon of soy sauce and a tablespoon of maple syrup. Um, and then you let that sit. Um, you don't do anything yet, but in the same pan that you were using before you melt a tablespoon of butter, and then you add a tablespoon of flour, you whisk it, and then you whisk in a cup and a half of milk. And just like, um, for, uh, many gravies, you just kind of stir it until it's thickened. And then you add that into the food processor or blender and you pulse until everything is kind of combined. You can, and it said you can leave the chunk, like however much chunkiness you want. I actually made it pretty smooth um, just because I don't, I was using, I was going to use it as a drizzle. Um, and then it said you could return it to the pan if you needed to, or you could just use it right away. 
so I had all these dreams of this was called to like put it over this roasted squash that also had like a mushroom stuffing it looked really good but honestly like I was kind of making this later at night and like by the time I got to the squash part this like stuffing was more complicated than I realized so I just actually roasted the squash I drizzled it with olive oil salt and pepper and like had the squash rings and then drizzled the mushroom gravy over it and that was really delicious um so no regrets on that but um yeah so it was really good I really liked it it was a really good like sauce um and it was it's easy I always forget that like gravy is like again like I like how this recipe said like you don't have to be super precise you have to pay attention because you're thickening stuff but I really it was delicious um and uh, yeah, I'm going to do it again because it was just a nice sauce. And um, I also forget that like the gravy doesn't have to be on like only mashed potatoes. There are so many things you can put it on and it's like delicious on a variety of things. So I was glad to have like re uh, rediscovered gravy and also realized that there's so many different kinds. And um, yeah, that's what I did. I, sometimes gravy just will make the dish like if you've just got some plain chicken but it's a Kurt my husband will make gravy he's really good at making gravy and he whipped up something the other day that was a knockoff of uh Kentucky fried chicken gravy and it was really good we were just having mashed potatoes and with the kiddos and uh it was yummy so yeah well I'm glad that you tried the gravy and it sounds like you found one that's really unique. I, it sounds really tasty. And I, the whole time you were describing it, I just kept on wondering what you were going to put it on. And I love that you put it on squash. That's so cool. And to me, that sounds like it would be a really nice Thanksgiving side because we're coming up on Thanksgiving. So I've got that on the brain, but I just think that that would be super nice and vegetarian for folks who need that. And yeah, that sounded great. Yeah, I, I, it was really good. And I, what I would say too, like, I also think it would be delicious on like a steak, you know? It, oh it yeah. Well with red meat too, <laughs> I had sure. a feeling you weren't going there though. Like I was like, yeah. I don't think she's going to put this on steak, even though that sounds really good. It would be really good. But, <laughs> so cool. Well, if we have no further comments, I will take us out and say, thank you for watching recipe share. Be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on AADL.org to find the recipes we talked about and feel free to share your own in the comments. Join us next time when we will be talking about amazing corn. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe share. Recipe share. Share a little recipe with recipe share.